telephone, Dario Savarese. I like that name, says Rob Mario. Uh, and the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Festival, uh, of which I have been a part of uh, maybe 10 of these in the past. They're all marvelously uh, produced, and the weather's always great for these two. Dario, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. We're, we're enjoying a little bit of rainfall in the next couple of days, and we, of course, uh, do a lot of praying um, for some specific days um, on April 26th, 27th, when we host our United Bank Bloom and Wine Fest, and then the parade weekend, uh, Hang Tang uh, uh, Car Wash Firefighters Parade and the Glow Fiber Grand Feature Parade, we, we pray for great weather on those four days specifically. Yes. Today we'll take it. What is the economic impact on the region of this incredible performance you folks put on here? Well, um, it is it is a fascinating question, and it's something I've been working on for years, and I've done some rough studies. Um, we, we feel the economic impact is over $10 million. Um, we know that within the, uh, the just the Frederick County um, and, and Winchester City, not even really counting Warren County, not counting Martinsburg and, and the Panhandle uh, hotels, that they're all selling out on and booking, you know, at the uh, 98 percentile uh, all the weekends. And then during the week, they're, they're booked up into the 80s, which is, is a really a high watermark. So the hotels are all strong. We, we get statistical information from Virginia Tourism. You know, what does an average day tripper spend versus what a uh, overnighter spends? Those numbers have increased dramatically um, due to uh, mild inflation, right? And um, so it, it's it's somewhere in the $10 million plus. I, I'd love to engage with the uh, the DMO or the CBB up there in, in the panhandle because we know, I will say this, another thing that we've done, um, some surveys, we, we get a lot of our neighbors um, from the panhandle, not only of West Virginia, but Maryland and lower Pennsylvania to come, you know, from north to south to enjoy, enjoy you know, a little bit of warmer weather, and especially from Pennsylvania and, and the, all, the, all the activities that we're hosting. This is the 97th. I uh, have uh, the 75th. Uh, I have the shirt hanging in my closet still from the 75th. I used to announce the uh, firefighters parade on the Friday nights there. It's hard to, for me to believe this is the 97th. Who are some of the big names associated with this one this year, Dario? Well, before before I go into the, the quote-unquote 97th festival, the physical festival, let me also share with you and, and all of our neighbors uh, that we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Shenandoah ba- Apple Blossom Festival this year. So in 1924, May 3rd was the first Grand Feature Parade in May of 1924, and here, here we are, 19, excuse me, 2024, 100th anniversary. And so you say to yourself, why the 97th, right? But you're a very knowledgeable man with, with your radio program. Tell me why we're celebrating the 97th when it's the 100th anniversary. Well, you've got some years you couldn't do it. You got, yes. You had COVID. You got World War Two. You got all, you know, all that stuff going. On. Yeah. No. No. And 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 you you're you're spot on. See, a, a lot. Some folks are scratching their head. It, it's World War Two. There were three years uh, that we uh, they took the hiatus. I wasn't around at that point, but. Uh, three years, so that that's why there was a three-year miss. We actually kept the COVID, or excuse me, the pandemic year, um, and because we had hosted some events already, and so the the board had decided to keep that rolling. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, you know, we've got that squared away. And then in 2027, it'll be another big year for us because we will celebrate the 100th festival. So we're going to take advantage of, of all anniversaries and opportunities to continue to promote and, and uh, build off of the festival. But um, in terms of, you know, who we have coming, our queen this year is Joy Berlanga, the uh, third in a trio uh, and great-granddaughter of Gerald Ford. Her mother was queen years ago, and then her grandmother was queen back in the, uh, the 70s, uh, I believe it was. So... Joy Berlanga is our queen uh, this year. We just announced on Friday that as a sports guest, we've got uh, another legend uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Rocky Blyer, with, uh, I believe he had four Super Bowl rings. Indeed. 
and and um, this is a you know those Pittsburgh Steeler fans come out for their uh, folks when we had Heinz Ward here a couple years ago it was crazy and and we sold fifteen hundred tickets when we had Terry Bradshaw here as our sports marshal so we've got uh, Rocky Blyer joining us we've we've got um, a great speaker for the Valley Health Business Luncheon Stephanie Stuckey talking about how. She is rebuilding the Stucky uh, brand. Um, I'm sure you probably have had a couple of uh, the famous uh, Stucky's pecan rolls. Oh, yeah. Tasty. Delicious. <laughs> Can't yeah, get enough they, of them. You know what? We heard her at a, a, a tourism conference, and uh, she really told an amazing story about how she wanted to rebuild and bought the, the brand back from some conglomerates and um, I, I think it's going to be really fascinating on Wednesday, May 1st, when we host the business lunch, and I think that'll be uh, neat. You know, we are, are Sharon Gromling, who was our festival president in our last year in a two-year run, but prior to that has been involved with Apple Blossom for about 40 years. Um, she is very big on, you know, local and families and kids, and so this year she introduced um, our kids, uh, Marshall, which is Snoopy. Um, bringing them up from uh, King's Dominion. We're excited to have that. And then, of course, another um, local person that we're recognizing and honoring, another thing that she has done is engaged with um, the fact that uh, Barry Lee, a local radio host for, for decades here, is our honorary Grand Marshal. Um, we have a Grand Marshal. We have yet to announce. Um, it's under lock and key, and they should be doing that sometime this week. And then they are trying to finalize and button down some schedules for our sports marshal, um, you know, as well. So kind of that's where, where we are with, with some of our um, celebrities at this time. We have a number of other speakers. Um, Dobson, who is going to speak at the prayer brunch. We've got Toby Mack performing at the Contemporary Christian Concert. Uh, Kara Dixon, who has been on TV and a local young lady, is speaking at a ladies' horticultural luncheon. So we've we've got a few more names to announce hopefully this week. Rocky Blyer spoke. It's kind of neat how the apple blossom is in Winchester, the apple harvest is in Martinsburg. Uh, six months later, five months later, it's kind of neat how that works out. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocky Blyer spoke at Apple Harvest uh, a couple of years ago here in Martinsburg, and I got to introduce him, which was pretty cool because when I was in fifth grade, he was the keynote speaker at my football banquet. For, wow. for our youth football program, you know, fifth through eighth grade, and Rocky Blyer, which you know, it's pretty cool. You're in fifth grade. There's a Pittsburgh Steeler standing there talking. That was he tells some great stories too about Vietnam and his career as a Steeler. He is well worth the price of admission. Bill, yeah, uh, good morning, Dario. Uh, selection. How do you select your celebrities, and when do you start the process? You know, that's a fascinating question. Um, I, I'd have to say we've been all over the globe. Um, in terms of how the process is done, um, they have a, we have a festival committee. They're they're starting in the fall. Um, they're reaching out and, and talking to folks. Usually, one of the toughest um, persons to you know engage with is is you know locking in a queen. Um, last year, we we had uh, the Aston daughter, um, the third of the Aston family. Um, uh, Sean Astin and, and his career in movies. And so that's always seems to be the, a, a real big challenge. But we start talking early to them, and uh, we have a budget for it just like everybody does, and it's, it's meager compared to what is happening in the sports world. Um, that, that's a whole other segment uh, as to, you know, how do you afford to pay celebrities to come sometimes um, – the legends seem to be more reasonable than than the new ones uh, with all the NIL and everything going else going on. So, you know, we start early and, and, you know, you put the feelers out. And then we also try to network with the folks who are engaged with the festival, um, who have connections and, and uh, opportunities with different folks. Do previous uh, uh, marshals, grand marshals, sports marshals, uh, stay involved in looking for individuals for the future? Yes. Um, matter of fact, I'm sure you guys try to network through the folks. I always say that there is a aha moment when people come, celebrities come to Apple Blossom and participate, especially if they get here on Friday 
and then participate on, on activities Friday and Saturday. It's a different um, engagement that we have with, I think, our celebrities at these different events. They're making cameos. They're taking some photos. It's really, you know, just like the the Martinsburg and, and the Panhandles, Apple Harvest, it's very family-oriented, community-centric. And the, the celebrities, you know, get this aha moment. It's like, oh, now I get what's going on here. This this is all-American event, just like yours in, in, in the Panhandle. And so they will talk to other folks. Um, Marcus Allen came a few years ago. He happened to be talking to Eric Dickerson, um, a gentleman I happen to know uh, who was good friends with Eric Dickerson called me up one time and said, hey, Eric was talking to Marcus. Marcus had a great time. Um, and, uh, you know, Eric would like to come out and, and participate, and we had him last year. So those, those opportunities are, you know, priceless um, because, again, we'll, we'll go back to the fees that you can and cannot afford to, to uh you know, pay them. But, I mean, when you look at some of our celebrity list, you know, we've had Daryl Green, LeVar Arrington, Bobby Allison, NASCAR, um, Willie Mays, 1984. I mean, you know, think about what Willie Mays would cost now in today's world. Frank Beamer, Red Arback. Um, the other one I saw, I was just taking a peek at uh, Gail Sayers, oh. Dick Vitale. I mean, to think that we've had some of those folks along with other celebrities here is is truly unreal for a small community like, you know, our region. Um, and, and I look at Winchester and Martinsburg and the Panhandle as there's no real difference between us uh, other than about 12 miles and VA versus WV. Yeah, your, your guest list is, uh, you know, it's like punching above your weight. This is Winchester, Virginia, which is a lovely town, but the, the, yeah. the star power you pull in is tremendous john gilstrap you were a firefighter did your company ever send trucks out to the firefighters parade three years in a row i think it was 83 84 and 85 absolutely it's a great parade it is well, a great parade if i recall winchester had then green fire trucks we i think uh, that is true i see in our uh hang ten car wash uh, firefighters parade today antiques and and those that are in the 70s and 80s that are green. Uh, there's a splash of everything in that uh, firefighters parade, and and uh, we invite your fire company back. Um, I will say it has been a little bit more of a challenge with fire companies because everything's gone from volunteer to professional, and municipalities um, may have an issue on paying time off uh, or or sending trucks out and and fuel and everything else in this budgetary world to, you know, the beautiful uh, valley to participate, you know, in a volunteer, you know, parade. So we, we've lost some some units through the years, but we're, we're building and we're adding bands and things of that nature um, to uh, get uh, and keep both of these parades back-to-back, -back, you know, as strong as possible. We did get in trouble for cranking up the sirens. Apparently that's not as entertaining for the people on the street as it is for the folks in the, in, what, in the fire trucks. What was your fire company, John? Uh, it would have been Fairfax Company 14, and then for the later parts, it would have been Prince William uh, Company 14. Yeah, no. different. Um, yeah, good job. I have a question. I, I hate that I have to ask the question because it's such it's such a fun, lovely event, but we have these are the days that they are. Bring it. Bring it. Security issues. What do we have? A lot of security. A lot of um, uh, a lot of paid security. Um, through the years, we used to have the, uh, I don't know if that I'll, I'll describe it correctly, but we used to have, uh, I think it was called the Virginia Defense Force, and some things changed within that and the, the Army National Guard and rules and regulations. So in the past few years, we have had to pay handsomely for outside security to come in. There are about uh, 55 egresses. Um, we have every month Starting in the fall, we have an emergency. Well, they call it a, I call it emergency management meeting. Um, it's not that it's an emergency right then and there, other than it's all about security, road closures, um, things that they have done uh, between the city, the county, and the sheriff's office to uh, be very prepared and as prepared as you humanly possibly can be. There are a lot of cameras, stationary and mobile uh, units. Um, 
There's actually drone activity um, that was used this past year to help find a little girl and reunite her with her family that just you know wandered away. So they, you know, will we'll spend uh, excess uh, generally of six figures on on paid security outside of uh, Frederick County, City of Winchester, and everything else. That is, that's a whole different budget. Uh, Dario, uh, regarding money, uh, what is your total overall budget, and where do you get your funds? It's a lot, a lot of budget money. <laughs> I, I don't know the exact number. I, I defer that to uh, Brad, Brad Veach, our executive director, but it's in excess of, of uh, seven figures easily, um, times a couple probably. But uh, So we are blessed just like your community, uh, our communities together, to, to be honest with you. Um, we're, we're generating money through ticket sales, we're generating mem- money through memberships. We have a club called the Apple Club people can t- participate with. We have uh, a lot, a lot of corporate partners who are donating, you know, I'll say small sums of money. But when you add up, you know, um, 150 to 200 sponsors, all at uh, varying amounts, you know, I, I would like to say on my tombstone there will be a line that will say, Nicking, nickel and diming our way to success. <laughs> so it's every, you know, $2,500 sponsor, $1,000 sponsor, $5,000 person. Um, we are blessed. We are blessed with a great region um, where people, you know, enjoy the community and want to see it stay strong. And, and I, another a tagline of mine, gentlemen, I think you guys probably would agree, it still matters to be involved in Winchester, Front Royal, Martinsburg. Um, we're, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're both growing communities up and down this region, but we're not Tyson's Corner yet. It's not just a strictly a numbers game of how people engage with the community. A lot of people will, commu- you know, engage in and be community partners and, and want to be known as that because they're also hiring and recruiting employees. They're trying to treat their employees. A lot of businesses use the festival as an employee reward. Dario, on that note, we are out of time. How can people get uh, more information about the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Festival? Visit thebloom.com. In the past uh, two years, we've added 12 new events, Veterans Dinner, Pickleball, Breakfast Walk, uh, Fiesta Latina. There are a lot of new events. Visit thebloom.com. Click on the events page. I'm very thankful for the partnership uh, that we have, you know, with the station there, and and look forward to continued uh, partnerships. And give us a call. We're we're going to try to get uh, see if we can get Rocky on the uh, phone with you guys. That would be awesome. Thanks, man. Dario, have a great day. You have a blessed day as well. Dario Savarese.